Graduating with a Bachelor of Teaching Primary, Bachelor of Arts with Honours, Class 1 in Teaching, Sarah Wisdom. I got that wrong. Oh, sorry. Claire Connolly. Brendan Mitchell. Thank you, Associate Professor Parks. I now have great pleasure in inviting Brendan Mitchell, who graduated earlier with a Bachelor of Teaching, Primary, Bachelor of Arts with Honours Class 1 in Teaching, to speak on behalf of the graduates. Brendan. <laughs> Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, members of the Council, staff of the University, families and friends of the graduates, and most importantly today, graduates. I feel humbled and privileged to have been asked to speak today on behalf of you all. And I think back to 2010 when we all had some variation of the thought, I can be a teacher. And we thought, to quote David Bowie, we can be heroes. <laughs> today, we come together to celebrate the culmination of four years of hard effort, having achieved our goal, and for many of us, having had that sweet, blissful feeling of seeing that first pay packet. But it would be remiss of me on this day of celebration not to acknowledge those among us with superpowers, far greater than merely leaping a tall building in a single bound. There are those among us who have the power to put up with a uni student who has an assignment worth just a mere 50% of the course load due this afternoon, might not have started yet, and is sweating pure fear. <laughs> we graduates would not be here today if not for you, if not for your help your unending support, patience, coffee, midnight fast food runs, coffee, understanding, your proofreading, your reminders to eat and to sleep, and your acceptance that this university thing will pay off in the long run. To you, I say bravo. You have without a doubt undertaken the far more difficult task, and I offer on behalf of my fellow graduates a sincere and heartfelt thank you. Now this is of course a university event and I felt it appropriate to prepare this speech in the same manner in which many of us prepared our university assignments. I wrote this speech through a process of very rigorous procrastination. <laughs> I did that same thing that many of us have done with a looming due date. I got myself a snack and I went YouTube diving. <laughs> now I found, funnily enough, a video, uh, a particular one called Kid President Throws a Surprise Party for a Retiring Teacher. And it left me thinking, that's how I want to be remembered when I retire. Miss Flexer had been teaching in the same school for 41 years. And the party organised for her was full of students from across her expansive career right back to 1963. Her former students shared their memories and a common thread emerged from all of them. They all attributed their success in life to her positive influence. That is how we should all be remembered as someone who changed our students' lives for the good. Now, this video segued, as only YouTube can, into watching John Keating, played by the inimitable Robin Williams from Dead Poets Society, deliver these words to his students. No matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. Now, that's a powerful thought, but let me reframe it for you with a story that I believe I may have heard from Gordon initially. A teacher, let's call him Mr Smith, runs into a former student one day while doing his groceries. Now Mr Smith is struggling to remember this student's name, but the teacher remembers Mr, Sw Mr Smith quite clearly, and he remarks, I remember you. You were right. You said to me that I would never be anything but a cleaner at the supermarket, and here I am. Which teacher do you want to be? Miss Flexer or Mr Smith? No matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. Now, Kid President, in his pep talk video, exhorts us all to be more awesome, to be like Miss Flexer. Be more awesome with your words and your ideas. 
Don't encourage your students to be awesome. Empower them to be awesome, to use words and to have ideas that can change the world. You won't know whether you have the next Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Rembrandt, Mozart, Eddie Marbo, Nelson Mandela or Dick Smith in your class. But your words to that struggling student who wakes up in a panic attack every morning, who is punted from house to house, from week to week due to a split home, who has anxiety and guilt issues, who is not coping and is in tears in your office begging for an extension for an assignment, your words to that student will have a butterfly effect that you cannot foresee. Be awesome, inspire, uplift and encourage. And remember, no matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. Thank you. Brendan, thank you very much. Uh, the Graduate Speakers event is always a highlight, I think, of graduations. And uh, Brendan, despite procrastinating, really did come up with a, a good and uh, very, very helpful and well-delivered speech. And, and for all of you in your noble profession, you really can change the world. There's no doubt about that. I think all of us, everyone here in this hall, could remember the the two or three or five or whatever it was, teachers we had during our young lives that, that really did make a difference to us and inspired us and encouraged us. So Brendan, I think you caught those sentiments uh, very, very well and I thank you on behalf of uh, the audience for your speech. Before I declare the ceremony concluded, I'd ask that the graduates remain seated and invite my colleagues up here on the dais and also all of our guests in the audience uh, to stand and, en and join me in applauding the wonderful achievement of our graduates. Thank you all very much. And I think as an audience you should applaud yourselves as well because the amount of noise was just right. <laughs> I now declare the ceremony concluded and invite you to join us for refreshments in the Millery Cafe bar to continue celebrating this very special day together. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs>